The fact that you're against us women in ministry, that's my introduction. Oh, boy. I know we talked about it last time, but yeah, I'm very... Well, you're not, you're not in ministry. You can't be in ministry. You're, if, and if you're pretending that you are in ministry, then you're preaching a demonic gospel. Women are not to be in ministry, period. Not only can I source this from the Protestant perspective, but I would like to ask you first and foremost if you know anything about church history. I want to start with that. Before we get into trying to throw Bible verses back and forth, can we just start with church history? Do you know anything about church history? Uh, yes and no. I guess what specifics? Are you asking if in the early church was there any apostles that were female? Because you asked. No, me last I'm time. asking things like, do you know anything about the Great Schism or the Second Schism or any of the councils, which uh, the ecumenical councils, which were brought together? Do you know anything about any of that? No, I just know Bible and Bible right. says that woman. So here, so here would be my question to you. Why do you follow the Bible if you don't know anything about its history? Because I believe in Jesus, and Jesus is the Word, and the Word is God, and I just follow. And I'm learning. I'm, I'm studying the Bible. I'm not, I haven't read the entire Bible from front to back, but what I have read from it, it does allow women to be in ministry. No, it doesn't. So hang on. Let's, let's back up a little bit. Okay. What if I told you that throughout the entire history of the church, women were not allowed to be clergy ever until uh, about a few hundred years ago? What if I told you that? Can I ask you a question? Would that, would that, hang on, would that weigh in? I'm not even saying that this is true. I'm just saying, let, let's just say that it were true. Would that hold any weight whatsoever in your mind as to whether or not women should have ministries. I, I mean, I would be like, okay, well, didn't, in the Bible, does it say that? I would just go back to Bible. I feel like that's just, I always... Could I add? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I but, think but, I, but I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. How do you know the Bible is true? Is it just a feeling? It's proven it's true. Even no. like the things that have happened, they could prove that Jesus... Well, hang on. Lived. Let her answer. Let her answer. Well, yeah. No, so it's not just a feeling. Although there are experiences where you could quote unquote say that you could feel the Holy Spirit, whatever. But as far as the Bible goes, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been proven and it's continuous. Okay. Being so proven. let's, uh, let's start with this. What's your best proof that Jesus Christ existed? That over 500 people saw him after he rose again. And that's, there's no hallucinations. That's, there's no, there is no mass hallucinations. There is no, People were drugged up. No, people saw it. It's not a matter of fact if Jesus existed or not. The only argument is if he is the true God. People exist. In every religion, people can, can look at Jesus and know that he was real and he existed. Okay. And Jesus was a conductor of miracles, correct? Yeah. Okay. So as a conductor of miracles, these were also witnessed, right? Yeah. And who sourced those miracles? Disciples. Men. And who else? Men, like just men, people. And then, yeah, yeah there's uh, even people that weren't his disciples. People in, in like the Roman, yeah. Like the Romans did? Yeah. I mean, okay. if you look at so history then, books from that okay, time. Okay, hang on, hang on, okay. hang on. I'm not trying to trip you up. I'm just trying to yeah, kind of right. walk you through. Because here's what I've noticed. What I've noticed is, is that when I talk to Protestants, I ask them kind of basic questions about church history, they can't really answer any of them. And I think that that's kind of an important detail, and they just kind of seem to pay it lip service. So, for instance, the idea, are you a Trinitarian? Yes. Okay, when did that idea get introduced into Christianity, do you know? In the beginning was the Word, and then also when Lake... Now, when did it get introduced, though? When did it get introduced? Do you know when the idea itself got introduced? Because the church was fighting about this, right? There was Unitarians, yeah, essentially, fighting. under a guy named uh, Arius. They were called Arians, and they had taken over the entire church. Mm -hmm. They had taken over 90% of it until they had a council, which they finally were able to settle this in. And you just like, you don't know any of that, right? No, but I know that in the Bible. Yeah, but don't you about, think that it's? But but this is why this is why no, the body no, no. of the church is no, so no, important because, because the body of the church. Hang on, because the body of the the church is a conductor of the history of the church. They are able to collect this, and then they're able 
to utilize both tradition and church history in order to convey to you the proper message. This original church, the reason you're a Trinitarian is because their council, their council told you that you are to be a Trinitarian as a Christian. That's what they, the original church, said to you to do. You know what they also told you you can't be? What else did they say you can't be? A clergyman. That's right. You can't be clergy. So how come we take one part of what they say and you would accept it as being true, but then the other parts that you don't like, you reject only because you just don't like them? Interesting. Well, can I, I have three questions slash points that I have for you. Number one, my first question is this. If you don't, are you saying that females in general can't be used by God? Because then my no. question there, okay, that's course, what I was going to not. say. We have female, there's female saints. No, I, I well, would never I was make such a claim. A, that that yeah. claim is ridiculous, but hang on. There's a difference between that and being clergy. Okay. Do you understand yeah, the we're distinction? We're talking there? about that. So we're then, my second ministry. question. Okay, well, ahead. sorry, I was just going to say that was my first question because then I was going to ask how. Um, what is your interpretation of the significance of the Book of Esther, of uh, the Book of Ruth, and stuff like that? Who um, are very significant women in our faith, but if you um, don't. I guess discount the fact and that they women were clergy. Can be used. No, but this was my second. That's what no, I was wait, asking. Wait, 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 hang on. Yeah. No. No, but that's what I said. No, my not, question no. was. And the answer is no. They were not clergy. But yeah, ministry, that wasn't my question. Ministry, okay. I was going to say. Is your, what is your understanding of what ministry is? Let's well, get no, on the that same. wasn't my question. My question was, do you think that the Lord can use women? That was my very specific question. Yeah. It wasn't about he clergy. Does, it wasn't about ministry. That. that was just my question to clarify, just so I could to understand clarify what? more. We're talking about whether or not women can be clergy. Yeah. And then my second question is, you said that the church's history is a mix of tradi tradition. My question for you is, didn't Jesus come back because he was basically wanting to break that because the Pharisees... Was no, Jesus came to give us a church. He said so himself. He came to give us his church. And but wasn't that exactly the, the issue did. with the dogmaticness of the Pharisees and that he, they were he, all tradition? Oh, he told his disciples to take his church to all four corners of the world, which is exactly what they did with yep. ministries. And that's including what they us. did, they did it with ministries. Can you name the female minister? Can you name the female clergy member? Can you name the female that went to any four corners of this earth in order to deliver his message to the world? Who was it? What was I'm, her name? I was going to say, I think in the book of Acts, and you could look this up and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not saying specifically ministers that have written scripture, but I'm pretty sure in the book of Acts it actually does reference women who became believers and then went out and spoke. So I'm not too sure if you could look that up. That's but, not clergy. But that's what that's I'm just clergy. wondering. We're so are you specifically yeah, talking about that? I'm just trying to understand. And then my third question for you is you were saying that when did the Trinity come into faith? I'm just genuinely curious. Wouldn't that have been on the day of Pentecost when... Can we start, can we start with this? Let's start with something yeah. super simple. Yeah, let's go to Bible. Women should keep silent in churches, for they are not permitted to speak. They hmm. should also be in submission, as the law also says. If they desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it's improper for a woman to speak in church. Yes, the context. What, is that, what does that mean? So what they're talking about, I actually just learned this, that okay. the context in that is that the woman should not, the wife should not be interrupting in the middle of sermon, like, hey, husband, what did, the, what did the pastor mean? Like trying to learn from him in the middle and wait till you get home. That's both of them sitting in the church and as a husband and wife taking in whoa, the whoa. sermon. What church? Well, at that time, like that's... Well, wait, wait a second. What church? What is the church? The people. The church is we the are, people. Oh, us. the church is the people. Right. Ah, that's really interesting. So if a church is just people, if it's just a... a, a if we're all just the assembly of the church, then this means any time that you are being ministered to by any man, you should be quiet, right? Because everywhere you are, by your logic, would be the church. No. Interesting. Okay, well then go ahead and, and I'm waiting for the counter argument because no isn't one. Just saying no is not a okay. counter argument. Just being so like, no, if, I don't think if so. We had, if we had the Apostle Paul and I was with my husband and the Apostle Paul is talking, right, then him and, and my husband and I were together. I'm not going to be interrupting my husband saying, what did he mean when he said this? It's like that, that is saying you go and wait until you're home and, and, and get that answer. Don't interrupt in church. 
that, that are interrupted. Yeah, what is church? church? When you're being taught. When you're being what taught is, by. Yeah, being taught where? By who? Okay, but that's by uh, someone that's in the church. But that's not saying that the someone woman. Someone who's can, in the church. Well, you keep on saying you we're in a church. Can't. We're in a church and, and a pastor's talking. But this building isn't the church, right? So what is the church? The church is wherever you bring the word. And I think going uh, back and, and I think going so back to where you are at all times, you're supposed to be quiet and not correct men, right? Not supposed to correct men. And you are supposed to ask who for guidance. Context. You're taking it out of context. What, what is happening I think you're in that, taking in it that out of scripture? Context. They're not just out in dinner. They're not just out watching a movie. They're not at the mall. They're they're in a in a church setting where they're being what is taught the, the word setting? of the word of God. What is that setting? Does it require a building? It doesn't require a building. It doesn't it's require a building. The Holy Got it. In so there. wait. So what does it require? What is it, what is a church setting then? What does it require? What are the requirements to be at church? Feel There's no building required. What was what would you, what was those last three words you said? I yeah. What uh, what is the requirement to be at church? What is it? I feel like it'd be a, a way of life. A church is a body of people, too. I feel like a lot of ah, times... Ah, yes, like, a church is a body of people. Yeah, and going back to even you said it, you said um, Jesus told all his disciples and he told people to go out to the four ends of the earth and tell people about it. So if I'm a woman and the Bible says that, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to be like, no, I can't do that because... I, he didn't speak directly to me. It says in the Bible, he spoke to his disciples. It talks about us, no matter who you are, to go and do that. Yeah, and then when Jesus...